Hey guys, what's going on? It's Eli, back with another review video, and yes, my part one review of Star Wars Visions Season 2. Yes, we finally and at long last got Season 2. Um, first off, uh, a quick recap on Season 1. Season 1 of Star Wars Visions... I thought was pretty good. You know, I did a review on it, and um, yeah, because season one, basically, it was all in the style of anime, all the episodes, and, um, you know, in different languages, and sometimes they were speaking English, you know, but still, overall, season one was good. And for season two, well, I was thinking, you know, at first, you know, gonna be just like, say, season one, you know, more anime, but no. This time, what they did with Season 2, more animation styles, like, not just anime, uh, you know, 2D animation, different, like, style uh, 2D animation, that is, CG, and stop motion. Like, that's awesome! <laughs> yeah, um, and I can already tell, because Season 2 has been doing pretty good, and that's good. So, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, my part one review, reviewing the first three episodes of season two. Um, yeah. Episode one, Sith. A former Sith apprentice leading a peaceful but isolated life is confronted by the past when her old master tracks her down. Now, in the first episode, um, the animation to um, episode one was done by El Guri Studios. Um, not really familiar with that animation studio. Um, but, um, yeah, like, you know, it, it was good animation for one thing. The style, of course. Um, yeah, so Lola, that's the name of the main character of the story, and her droid named E2. Um, basically, Lola used to be a Sith, and... Basically, like, Lola is an artist, like, she's painting and such, and is hiding on this, like, base, like, I'm not sure, like, what kind of planet is it? Like, something snowy or something? Maybe? I don't know. Um, and that's when, like, I think at one point Lola, you know, sees, like, a tracking beacon or, or beacon or something? Beacon. And, um, you know, her and E2, like, go off to check it out, and... The vehicle that she's on, it's the same vehicle that uh, General Grievous rides in Revenge of the Sith, you know, with the with the four legs. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Um, and that's when, yeah, I guess, like, the tracking beacon was destroyed, and it's basically an ambush. We see the Sith Master, who, I don't know, the Sith Master l reminded me of Darth Malgus, don't you think? Because when you look at the Sith Master in this and look at Darth Malgus... They have, like, almost the same mask, and I think the same face, but clearly that's not supposed to be Darth Ma Malgus. So, yeah, so the Sith Master and, like, I guess two artificial droids, I guess, I don't know, uh, you know, confronting Lola and, you know, Lola telling the Sith ma Master that, you know, she's no longer a Sith, and a cool chase and some good animation to it. Even E2 having his own action, like, firing, literally, a headshot. You know, one of the, like, droids that serves this, the Sith Master. And I had a feeling that was, that was coming, like, the Sith Master, like, disposes E2. But thankfully, at the end, he doesn't, he's not dead. So he's not destroyed completely. And, you know, converse, confrontation between Lola and the Sith Master... And, um, you know, I think at that point, like, with the artwork and painting stuff that Lola does, you know, it has to do something with the dark and the light side. So, you know, um, and Lola does defeat the Sith Master, like, you know, running past him and with the lightsaber she has. And that's interesting because, like, he just disintegrates, like, turns to dust, you know, and he... He doesn't care if he's dying. He's he's impressed, you know? And, you know, the last thing that she says to the Sith Master, I told you I'm not a Sith. 
and all ends well for Lola and E2. They finally, like, you know, leave the planet and, you know, the system and so on. Yeah, I gotta say, like, the animation for this and, you know, done by L. Gurgi Studios, really good. Like, very beautiful animation with the the painting stuff and all that. Very well done. Um, and now comes episode two, Screecher's Reach. A young girl seeking um, reper um, reprieve, I think I'm saying that right, yeah, from her days in a rural workhouse, yeah, that's what it was, a workhouse, discovers a legendary haunted cave with her friends. The cave's dark pool will change the uh, treachery of her uh, life forever. Yeah. So, Screecher's Reach, the animation for this episode was done by Cartoon Saloon Studios. Yeah. Um, Cartoon Saloon, it's, this, it's the same animation studio that uh, brought us The Secret of Cows, the Oscar-nominated animated feature film, and all the other animated films that they've done. Um, there was one about a fox, wasn't there? Yeah, I think I'm, I'm correct on that. So, yeah. So it's, it's that uh, animation studio that does the animation on this episode, Screecher's Reach. And really good. Yeah, once again, the animation, really good. Um, the characters in this were, were pretty good. And yeah, because Dal, Quinn, Baffin, and Kina. And, um, and also, I did not know this until now. I'm serious. Like, as I'm recording this, like, I'm looking at this. Um, Angelica Hudson did a voice in this, and she was the Sith Mother, and more more on the Sith Mother, like, near, as I get to, near the end of the episode. <laughs> yeah, so, um, Dal, yeah, Dal is the main character of this story, and, you know, going to the cave, you know, Screecher's Reach, and, you know, I think, like, ditching the warehouse that they were working at, and, um, you know, taking speeder bikes, you know, if they were, if they walked on foot, it would have taken three days for them to get to the cave. But of course, you know they use the they you they they steal speeder bikes to get to the cave. And let me tell you, uh, the ghost, as you know, the as it's as the characters titled, you know, Screechers Reach, like the ghost was pretty terrifying. Like her scream, you know, and you know, even though she's called the ghost, actually she is a living being. You know, she exists. You know, like, terrorizing and attacking our main characters, and Dal stays behind to confront the ghost, and it turns out that Dal realizes that she has the Force, and even, like, uh, snatching the ghost's uh, lightsaber, and, you know, even at one point, Dal using the Force to, you know, throw, a, like, a giant rock at the ghost, and, you know, the ghost is stuck... And, uh, you know, the ghost trying to reach, you know, her lightsaber. And Dal, smart thinking, you know, act, you know, ignites the lightsaber and basically kills the ghost. Yeah. And that's when, uh, also, there was a necklace that Dal was wearing. And basically, it was like a communication device or something like that. Contacting the Sith Mother. And the Sith Mother in her giant uh, shuttle you know, like, arrives and is taking in Dal, you know, to train her and so on. And yeah, uh, Angelica Hudson voicing the Sith Mother. Again, I had no idea that that was her until now, which, that's pretty cool. Hey, nice to see her uh, do something Star Wars. Yeah. Um, and, um, you know, all ends well, and, you know, Dal not really, you know, ditching, you know, her friends and, um, you know... No, never, as, as Dal says to them, never turn your back. And they don't, even though the Dal does have to go with the Sith Mother. So, yeah. That was a pretty good episode. And as I said, you know, the animation, really good, and from, done by Cartoon Saloon. Yeah, very well done. And now, finally, the third and final episode for, you know, my part one review. In the Stars, Two Sisters the last of their kind, who live in hiding on their ravaged land, squabble about how to survive the Empire, um, encroaching, encroaching, I hope I'm saying that right, 
on a water run, the sisters must fight back when they are discovered. Yeah, this was a pretty good one, too. Uh, and the animation for this episode being done by Punk Robot uh, Studios. Um, yeah, Punk, Ro Punk Robot Studios. I, I actually, like, did check and see. They, uh, from what, from what I've seen uh, of that, what they do, like, the animation they do, they've done, like, say, kitty animation with robots and such. That's the best I can describe, so, you know, bear with me. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, this episode is, uh, in stop motion, and, yeah, because, okay, obviously, uh, Punk Robot Studios has done stop motion, so, you know. Um, I, at first, I thought, and, I don't know, because I thought this was, I thought the animation, the stop motion animation was done by Leica Studios, you know, they've done Coraline, Paranorma, like, I thought it was them, but no, it wasn't. It was, uh, as I said, Punk Robot Studios. <laughs> but yeah. But yeah. Stop motion. The stop motion animation in this episode was really good. Definitely. And okay, so yeah. The two sisters um, named uh, Koten and uh, Tachina. I think, yeah, I got that right. Um, basically because, you know... They're like the only again. They're the they're the only two on their planet. Their mother had sadly died, you know, trying to fight against the Empire from taking over their home, the the planet itself, and building like the, the factory, basically the towers and like sewage systems, like you know, pl uh, stuff like that. And um, yeah, pretty sad. And you know, the little sister. Uh, I believe it's Tachina, yeah. Um, Tachina basically, you know, believing that, um, I don't know, like, the power was in, was in with their mother, etc. And, um, you know, the older sister, Koten, like, gosh, like, get a grip, big sister. <laughs> like, you know, doesn't want to hear this and, you know, is just too upset and depressed and is wanting revenge and to defeat the Empire and, you know, just trying her best to protect her little sister. And, um, yeah, I had a feeling at first that uh, the little sister would have, you know, the Force. Not to mention because, you know, she apparently has the capability of, like, bringing, like, drawings to life and, um... Yeah, pretty good. And with that, like, getting the backstory of their mother and what she did, you know, trying to defeat the Empire and how she sadly got killed was, uh, you know, the Chicken Walkers, you know, that appeared in Return of the Jedi. Yeah, those. Um, and, you know, Tachina wanting to take on the Empire, even though it seems like it's too dangerous for her. But, you know, she insists. And you know what? She does have her, like, really cool action moments taking on, like, the stormtroopers and, yeah, like, um, tasing them. And um, we also get, like, uh, two Imperial officers. Um, and, um, yeah, especially when, I think, yeah, like, the one Imperial officer, you know, Th like, having uh, the little sister being thrown to her death, you know, fall to her death, basically. And, yeah, it's the older sister, Koten, that has the Force, but I think still uh, Tachina does have the Force as well. And, you know, they do defeat the Empire once and for all on their home planet, like, I think it was, I, I think it was obvious. You think that, uh, you know, um, Koten is using the Force, like, gonna do something to the Chicken Walker. But no, she's going for the the water tanks, you know, causing a huge flood and defeating, you know, the Stormtroopers and the Imperial officers. Yeah, well done. Like, that was, that was pretty cool, you know, and makes sense. And, of course, all ends well, and, you know... Still, they're the only two that are on the planet, and um, another important thing in this episode is mentioning of the stars in the sky. 
like, Tachina saying that their mother, you know, became a star and is, you know, th like, she's watching over them. And, you know, the stars hadn't been seen in the sky for a while. Up until the end of the episode, the, the clouds clear and we see the stars. Yeah. All those that tried to take on the Empire, you know, that sadly got killed and, you know, watching over the planet and, you know, the two sisters. Very touching. Very touching. Yeah. This episode was pretty good. Like, again, as I said, the stop-motion animation and the, the story to this and with the two sisters, very well done. So, yeah. The first three episodes, Sith, Screechers Reach, and In the Stars, for, for these being the first three episodes, they were really good. As I said, like, really good episodes. And what about you guys? What did you think of the first three episodes of Season 2 of Star Wars Visions? And what did you think of my review? Leave comments and give this review a like, as always. So, with all that being said... Thank you very much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed my part one review of Star Wars Visions Season 2. More reviews coming your way. They're going to be awesome. Keep looking forward, and I'll see you guys in the next video slash review. Take care, and until my part two review, peace out, and may the Force be with you.